Hey guys. So, I don't know why this camera keeps fucking up, but whatever. Um, so I wanted to make this video. I don't know when I'm going to post it exactly. I'll probably post it right after this. Um, so today is August 15th, 2021. And this day means so much to me. Um, not just because today is my uncle's birthday, <laughs> but also because today, two years ago, I had my real spiritual awakening. I participated in my first full moon ritual. I even did a video two years ago today. Um, I just want to just talk about that because... It's been a long time coming. It's been a very eye-opening journey so far in my 25 years of living. Um, I didn't have the best situation growing up. Um, I came from a single parent household. Um, I didn't really get to see my mom as much and didn't really have that bond with her when I was a little girl. Although I believe I did. But we didn't really know each other. The only thing is just that she was my mom. I loved her and I wanted to be just like her. And that's as far as that goes. And I was protective over my mom even at a very young age. Um, I grew up in a household, a very dysfunctional household. Um, and... Growing up, I always felt like the oddball out. I always felt like I was different from everyone else. I didn't really have that many friends in elementary school. And I didn't even go to junior high. I was homeschooled. So, and even in high school, I struggled. So, I was trying to fit in and transform myself to someone I wasn't. Um, at age 14, um, going on 15, I tried to commit suicide three times. And three is a very special number to me because that's my life path number. And when you have the life path number three, you are prone to suicidal thoughts. Because we are known as the creative, the creative people, okay? Um, but I tried to commit suicide three times. I was going through a lot with my mom. We were not on the best terms at all. It was like, how could I put it? It was like, I loved her, but I didn't like her. And I feel like, because my mom and I are like twins, like we look alike. That's number one, and we act alike. So I felt like that is an extension of how much I didn't love myself because I didn't like her. But I didn't like her because I didn't have any self love for myself. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't like anyone. I didn't care about anyone. I didn't even care about myself. And I didn't want to commit suicide because I didn't want my mom to go in the house and find a dead body in the house. I didn't want her to find my body in the bed or something. So I just said, you know what, I'll just wait to die. I just wait to die. I'll just, you know, maybe someone else will kill me. Maybe I'll have like a health scare or a health issue, which I am a diabetic. So I'm like, maybe if I just let that shit just get out of control, I'll just die that way. It wasn't until I was 17 where I had my first spiritual awakening. And I didn't even realize it was a spiritual awakening at the time. I was doing horrible in school. I was 16 and I looked in the mirror and I saw, you're going to think I'm crazy, but it was like I saw a higher version of myself and I just kept hearing the voice, you're better than this, you're better than this, you're going to do great things, you are beautiful, you are worthy, start acting like it and I did a transformation. 
I still was going through the motions, but I definitely was in a better space than I was between the ages of 11 and 16. And I got introduced to spirituality. At least that's what I realized. That's what it was because it was a lot of stuff that I did. I, I do now that I did back then when I was a kid. I just didn't know that it was spiritual. I had no idea. Um, so, um, around... 2018 it was probably the worst year of my adult life I was very very angry I went from being very very passive to being very aggressive um it was a lot going on with school and everything else I was at college and I was pursuing a degree I didn't even want a nursing degree I didn't even want and um I was always angry walking around angry and I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I had my moments where I stood up for, for you know, what's right and, 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 and definitely put you in your place when you were wrong. But it's a certain way you go about doing things. And um, so around 2019, a lot happened. Um, I met this guy. I did a story time on him, Jay. Um, I don't want to say his name. Um, but he was probably the, f probably the first one I would say had the most impact on my spiritual journey. Um, he was very narcissistic, very controlling, very psychopathic. Um, he was a liar. He was a manipulator. Um, he was a hypocrite. If you hear, that's my mom. <laughs> but um, he was a hypocrite. He was a liar. He was a deadbeat father. Now, I don't have any kids. He has a, a son that he's not there for. Um, he's a cheater. And he really messed my head up because, and I let him do it. I let him do it. And that's another thing that I realized is that you have to take accountability for your actions. I let him twist my head. I let him go ahead and force myself, like he forced me to claim him as a boyfriend. But he never claimed me as his girlfriend. I let him control me. I let him, I let him do a lot get away with a lot I remember a conversation we had and he basically was just like I shouldn't have to prove myself to you because I know who I am and if I have to prove myself we don't need to be together and I went with that I'm like you know what let your guard down a little bit jazz you gotta trust people sometime but that sign right there he taught me you can say a lot, but you got to prove it with your actions. And that really messed me up. When I found out, so I found out who he really was, it really messed me up because I liked him. And sometimes when you're in a situation like that, you, you put up with a lot of stuff because you care for the person or you like the person. I was in a, in a very narcissistic friendship at that time as well. And again, I have to take accountability because... I let her get away with stuff. I created excuses for her. When you're dealing with a narcissist or just someone who's abusive, you're constantly making up excuses. Even not even for other people to believe, so you can believe them. And it got to a point where I almost got kicked out of school because of her. And I had to let her go. And the situation is still pending as a, because it seems like every five months or every six months, here she comes. Here my other the other ex friend who's just as manipulative as she is, here they come. And um I had to let them both go. I had to let him go. And around 
August 15th of 2019 my mom was just like why don't you participate in this full moon ritual with me it, it would do you some good you should you should try it she's been getting me to try to like try to give me to do this for years and I'm like no man affirmations manifesting you mean to tell me all I gotta do is just say something and then it, and then like it's out there and then it, it's just supposed to happen it's just supposed to eventually come to you when it's get out of here no don't, don't play with God like that don't play with the universe like that no I did it for the first time and it was a little weird at first it was a little weird like like okay <laughs> okay like I'm saying all this stuff but the first thing I manifested was a guy I said during my my full moon ritual I wanted to meet a Libra who was into acting and that's exactly who I met within two weeks after doing that. And um, that's another guy who um, definitely was a major part in my um, journey. I'm not going to say he's a bad guy. I just feel like my intentions were not clear. Because you know when you manifest someone... You have to state your intentions. My intentions were not clear. I didn't state I wanted to be with him. I didn't state I was in love with him. Or he'll fall in love with me. I just said this is who I wanted to meet. And at the end of the day, we have a respect for each other. It just wasn't going to work. He did some things. He lied as well. But what I appreciate is that he owned up to his lies. And um, he apologized. Which I never had a man do that before. And 2020 was my year of questioning. And just not even questioning. I feel like 2019 was questioning. But 2020 was more like a self-analysis. Figuring out where you went wrong, what could you have done better, like a review, kind of like. And then, with everything being shut down at that time, it gave me ample amount of time to really re-examine myself. And I knew it was going to be a very interesting year because Kobe passed away. And even though I'm not a basketball fan, I do have a connection to Kobe. And something about his death never seemed right with me. But I knew maybe he was going to help us to find answers. And that's when I came up with the conclusion of me taking responsibility for my actions in these situations. I used to be the one who always blamed everyone else and it's not everyone else. It's take It takes two to tango. You have to take accountability for your part. Even if you was in the right, you still have to take accountability for the part you played. And then 2021 hit. And then that same friend, that same friend tried to come back into my life and still refused to take accountability. But you know, narcissists don't do that. They take it and they flip it to make you look like you're the one that's losing your, mom, your mind and you're the one that's demonic. But really, you're not the one. You know? And I graduated from college with two degrees and um, my life couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and two, I try to figure out it, what I'm going to do with my degree. I am currently working at Ulta, Ulta Beauty, okay? Just until I get things situated right now, I just, you know, try to figure out where I, what I want, what I want to, what I want to do. <laughs> so I'm working there right now. I just started there four weeks ago. And I really like the job, so if you guys want, like, videos talking about, like, just what working at Ulta is like, I got you. Um, I'm going over scripts and stuff, because 
another thing I was watching this Don Cheeto video and he basically was saying how like do you want to act or do you want to be famous and to me I don't want to be famous I like for people to not know who I am <laughs> you know some days I want to be unbothered I want to I just I just want to be left alone you know what I mean but I never even though even when I tried to like get followers and I tried to do all that, it never works out for me. Like on TikTok, I don't know how I got all my followers on TikTok. But I'm at a thousand and something followers. I don't know where they came from. Because I haven't, I, even last year, I didn't even post that much. I only post like maybe like four things last year. Um, so, I know that that's just going to come, you know. It's just going to come to me when it's supposed to. I'm not going to force that. However, I care more about acting than being famous. So, I figure until they do open calls again, I'll just continue to practice and I'll do like monologues and things like that and really just maybe create my, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I would do it, but you know, I'm just prepping myself. And with my schedule at Ulta, I have time to do that. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, I I went from being very passive and quiet and sad because I was always misunderstood, and then I went from being from that to being angry. You know, like I'm so angry because I'm being misunderstood. But now I realize. Sometimes it's good to stand out. It makes you more interesting when you stand out. And even when it comes to dating. I made a video on TikTok and people, dusties, got upset at me. Um, because I basically stated in the video that you have to do more than just say you cute, I like you. Or you're cute, I'm interested. Okay. You have to do more than that to get a girl's attention. That's this. A woman, a high vibrational woman, okay? You have to do more than that. That's not going to get you in. It's not going to make the girl want to go out with you or anything. The type of woman I am, it's like, I feel like when people look at me, they see one thing, but really it's so much more beyond. And only a select few people can see that and understand that. I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like the guys that I come across, or they come across me, I'm, how can I put this without sounding too arrogant? I just feel like they see one thing, but I'm way more complex. I am the person who's going to ask the deep questions and give you, like you can't ask me a simple ass question and then expect a simple answer from me. I'm going to give you the deepest answer I can possibly give you. And it's really up to them if they're going to understand where I'm coming from and be like, oh, wow, she's more than just lipstick and hair and a nice body and this and that and the third and she a cute face. She actually has substance. I can talk to her. She can talk to me. And I feel like a lot of these guys, not all of them, but a lot of these guys are very surface. Meaning they only see the outside and that's all they really care about. Whereas a deep guy is going to under appreciate the fact that she's a deep person. She wants to be recognized as that. Not just, you know, cute face, big breasts, fat ass, all that hip style. She wants to be more than that, you know. And um, maybe one day... I'll meet someone temporarily because I'm not really looking to settle down right now. But if I meet someone along the way and he understands and we're on the same page about things, then I wouldn't mind that at all. But especially where I live at, like, I want to move <laughs> because people here are trash. I'm sorry. I love Cleveland, but Cleveland's trash. But, um, yeah. So, yes, it's been two years since my first full moon ritual there is going to be a full moon august 22nd 
So we do what y'all need to do. As y'all can tell, I got this and this. Let me see if I can see that. So both of these were given to me by my mom. Um, she gave me this, I want to say earlier this year she gave me this. Um, she gave me this for protection and for good luck. The hand, the handsome hand is for good luck. And then she recently gave me this, um, for extra protection. Um, and everybody, every time I wear this, and I haven't wore, this is like the first, no, the, for the past like week or so, I've been wearing this. Because I feel like this garners a lot of attention. So that's why I don't wear it. But now I don't care. Look at it. I don't care. Um, when guys see me wear this though, they, they're a little bit like, they're drawn to this. Because it does look like a hypnotizing spinning wheel, does it not? Kind of. Kind of gives off the effect. And women, when they see it, they're like, oh my god, can I, where can I get one? Look on Amazon. Look on Amazon. Go to your local spiritual store. If you're living in the Cleveland area, there's an Asian market downtown. They have these. So, you can get it. Now, this, I don't know where my mom got this from. But I'm pretty sure you can order it. And, 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 and you can find it there. Um, But, yeah. So... That's pretty much all it. But um, I'm happy to be here and I'm taking it one step at a time. And I know I have long ways to go during my journey, but I am happy at the progress that I, I've made. I came a long way since 1996, baby. Okay. Um. Anyway, um, I'll see you guys. Nice to see you guys.